The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 1. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of real women producing extraordinary results by finding their inner journey to self-confidence five days a week. Get your free audiobook at our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I am your host, Sheena Yapchan, and today we're in for a treat as, you know, I invited a amazing woman out to share her story about her inner journey to self-confidence. Now, the first time I met this woman, I met her in a, a live event in Austin, Texas, and I saw her on stage. She was sharing her story. You know, there was something about her that just drawn me to her, and I was just like, I have to connect with this woman, right? Because, you know, her story was just amazing. I kind of resonated with it, where she came from and where she is now. And another thing that I found out about her was she was from Toronto, like me. So I sent her a Facebook message one time saying, you know, hey, we're from the same town. And she was like, oh, that's awesome. You know, a couple months went by and I, I met her again in Chicago. But this time it was a different scenario because... You know, she formed this amazing women's group and it was just all these women just cheering and some of them were in capes and it was called the super women group. And I was like, that's something I wanted to do. I want to be able to, you know, surround myself with like-minded women, be able to have that su- support system, especially when you're, you're first out on your own business, doing something on your own, you're not sure what to do. And sometimes you may feel alone. So it took me a while to connect with the group, but when I did, plugged in with the assignments, I listened into their calls, and, you know, I made some of the most amazing friendships in that group because this woman just decided to start a women's support group that can help women step into their power. So I want to bring out this amazing lady. Her name is Layla Black. And Layla, maybe you can uh, share a little bit about yourself to the listeners. Sure. Awesome. I am excited to be here, Sheena. Uh, we're talking about firsts and all of uh, this in- this amazing information that you're sharing about self-esteem and self-confidence in that journey. And just speaking from a, a, a spectator point of view, where I saw you for the first time, brought you out on a hangout. Uh, you know, we didn't know each other. We, uh, we, 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 I don't think we had met at that point. Have we met already? I think we, I think, uh, I think we met but I was still in, you know, the little shy zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I remember you on this hangout and you were just silent. Like you you looked like a deer in headlights. So it was like, oh my God, uh, but you did it. And then seeing that that growth from now, you're, you're here interviewing incredible leaders and sharing so much value and sharing how you made that shift uh, and, and impacting other people. So it's it's really awesome to have witnessed that journey and uh, and be a part of it. But myself, I, uh, oh gosh, my self-confidence journey, really, we could go all the way back to the beginning, uh, all the way to like grade two. Uh, but my entrepreneurial journey, uh, when I when I became a, a business owner and I decided to own my own business, uh, I was the last person that anyone would expect would own a business. My husband and I, well, we weren't married then. We were uh, just dating. Uh, we, we played in a band. We had no jobs. We lived in the basement of a bar. Uh, I remember looking in Toby's wallet and he had $40 and we were just thinking, okay, what can we buy? How many dinners? How many pints of beer? Uh, <laughs> you know, and then we, we need some money. So we'll play a quick gig and we get like 50 bucks and that would last us for another couple of days. So we really were in uh, a situation where, uh, you know, we were having fun, but there really was no vision for a future or what we were going to do with our lives. And I, I really didn't, I really struggled with my own self value because my whole life it was, you know, go to school, get good grades, get a job, uh, be a doctor. Uh, that's what I heard probably since kindergarten, uh, since I brought my first A home, <laughs> it was like, okay, Layla's going to be a doctor. She's going to take care of us. Uh, and I was really smart, you know, half Asian, uh, kind of nerdy, uh, <laughs> definitely, uh, excelled at school easily. So everyone always told me, you know, you're going to, you're going to be a doctor. You're going to go to school and be a doctor. So I went, I ended up following through on what everybody told me to do. And I went to university and got into medical science and totally, totally flunked. <laughs> like it just, I just totally rejected it. I, I, I stopped showing up for classes. I stopped committing to assignments and I just, it wasn't me. And I felt my whole existence just resisting this path. Uh, and then I dropped out. So for me, it was like 
there was no way to be successful for me. I worked dead end jobs, telemarketing, drive through windows, uh, cleaning houses, uh, just t- terrible, terrible jobs where you feel like a robot and you have no, you're, you're trading your time for your money. You have no freedom because I didn't think I could do anything else. You know, my, I'd been programmed from that time to think that you had to, have this piece of paper from, uh, you know, a reputable college or university program. And, you know, you had to get a career. So if I didn't have that, since I flunked out and I, you know, it was the first time I'd ever failed anything in my whole life. I remember the first course was calculus and I failed calculus in university. And it was like, I just felt like worthless (laughs) because my whole life I'd been holding my value on my school grades and my performance. And so when it didn't happen for me, it was just like, okay, Okay, I'm destined to be a bum loser with a crappy job. Uh, and then I just ended up falling into the, the basement of a bar and kind of got stuck there for a little bit. So, so yeah, that, that was kind of where we started out. And then uh, it was a, definitely a roller coaster ride. Uh, you know, people laughed at us. People are like, what are you doing? Layla, go back to school. I don't know how many times I heard go back to school in my life. Uh, <laughs> you're too good. You're, you're selling yourself short. What a wasted potential. Like all of these things that we hear in our, in our, in our heads that people are telling us. So. So yeah, it was it was a journey, but it was definitely this whole process of getting to know myself and getting to develop this relationship with myself that helped me succeed in my business side of things because I, I wouldn't have made it. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have come out on top. I wouldn't have proved them all wrong. I wouldn't have uh, you know built a seven figure business if I hadn't taken the time to invest in myself because I had some pretty big deep rooted issues from my past that I had to release. Otherwise, you know, I would, I would be stuck in the same place that I was six years ago with, uh, looking for a, you know, a, a minimum wage job in the classified ads and not knowing what else to do. So, so yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Now we, we, we own our own business. We get to travel all around the world, meet awesome people, speak on stages and, you know, live this, this life on purpose where it's not just what somebody else says I should do, but it's what I really want to do. And I'm, I'm doing everything that I want to do in every moment. It's pretty awesome. That sounds fantastic. Layla. I know your story is truly inspiring. I mean, it's changed so many lives of so many women. And, um, is it cool if you can just let them know what your cultural background is or where you came from or where were you born? Sure. Well, I was born uh, actually just outside of Toronto in a kind of small town. My background is I'm, I'm half, First Nations and half Vietnamese. And it's really kind of interesting because that had a big effect on me and probably not in, in the best way. Uh, but because my mom was a native Indian and my dad was Vietnamese, the, and I'm sure you can relate with this. It, there, there are some strict beliefs in the Asian cultures. And, you know, when you go outside of the Asian culture, uh, there's not always acceptance. And so from the time I was born, uh, you know, I was, I was kind of shunned or, uh, pushed cast cast away from that side of my family because of my ethnicity or, or my mom's background. So it's like when I when I dug deep into some of these issues that I'd been carrying around, some of these self-confidence issues, you know, that came up of, you know, feeling rejected as a child and feeling like my dad and my dad's family didn't want to know me uh, because of something like who my mom is. So yeah, that's uh, that's kind of where I came from. And then growing up, you know, I was kind of like the chunkier, half Asian. People didn't really know what I was because, uh, you know, I, I kind of looked Asian, but I, I didn't really look Asian. And, you know, I was they, they were like, are you Hawaiian? They, I look different. And when you look different, you become a target. <laughs> and when you get really good grades and you have a little bit of a belly and you look different, then, uh, yeah, it was definitely a recipe for self-confidence issues for sure. Well, thanks for sharing with us um, that tip or that info. Um, what is your favorite quote re- when it comes to self-confidence? Well, I, I mean, there's so many, right? There, We could learn so much from the the experience of others. And it's really awesome to go through quotes of the past and past leaders. But one that always spoke to me and probably because of my my growing up with my my issues with bullies and the mean girls, which I'll talk about uh, in a second. But one of that really stands out to me is girls compete and women empower. 
So yeah, I'm sure you've seen that. I don't, I don't even know who said it, but it just really puts me in into a place in my mind where I used to always compete. Uh, you know, it always had to be a competition or I was always comparing myself to other women. And that was really the old me. And then when I feel like I grew into myself, when I really really truly stepped into the woman that I was supposed to be. Uh, that's when I was empowering other women and we were lifting each other up and it was just such a different chapter. So I've been in both places, girls competing with each other and women empowering each other. And uh, so that, that quote really stands out to me as something I'm passionate about. That's awesome. And that's also one of my favorite quotes too. In your, in your own words, what do you think, you, what is your definition of self-confidence? Um, I, uh, you know, I would say really a true conversation with yourself. And that is like minus any noise, minus all of the opinions of others and the voices that you hear. Uh, you know, when I was growing up, there were these girls at school and I call them the mean girls, but they were a couple grades older than me and they would follow me home from school. They would, you know, meet me outside at recess and I would be scared to go leave the classroom at recess and, you know, all of this trouble with these, these girls. And I, I think I was 10 or nine at the time. And, you know, I just, I only realized when I started to work on myself, how much they had been affecting me my entire life. Like this group of 10, 11, 12 year old girls had been affecting my decisions at school. They had been affecting my decisions with, uh, you know, drinking and alcohol. Like I was hearing them all the time and didn't even realize that I'd been carrying them around. So when I finally found my voice all that junk, all those mean girls, all that taunting, all that, that negative disbelief and doubt and fear that wasn't even me. I finally found out who I was and my voice. Uh, and, and then all of that junk that I'd been believing was real, I was able to let go. So that for me was when I truly found self-confidence. I've lost a ton of weight. I've, you know, been almost a fitness model. Uh, you know, I've, I've gained it all back. I've been pregnant twice. Uh, you know, I, I really all in all of that journey, when I truly found self-confidence, it didn't have anything to do with how I looked. It was really the, the conversations that were going on in my head when they became my conversations, my real voice, that that's when I felt truly confident. So that would be in, uh, I don't know, in a roundabout way, my definition of self-confidence. Well, thanks for sharing that. And we're, I'm just gonna have some questions for you. Sure. You said, you know, you, you had, you dealt with a lot of stuff when you were younger. So what was your life like before you had this self-discovery of, of self-confidence? Um, well, I really, like I said, I really struggled to see my own value. Uh, I was a university dropout. Uh, I, I remember being worried about what people would think on Facebook because all of my Facebook friends at that time were people I'd went to high school with. And, you know, they knew that I was going away to university to become a doctor. And then, you know, I was worried about what they would think when they saw, oh, Layla dropped out. Oh, uh, you know, the judgments that would happen. So I just never really felt, never really felt good enough. Um, and, you know, when I, when I felt, when I met Toby, I really struggled with my self-esteem, but I had like this temporary band-aid. And I don't know if you have any band-aids in your life, but it's, it's important to, to make sure that you, uh, you really do heal. So he, he always kind of made me feel loved and cherished. And he did a really good job of making me feel beautiful. So when I was dealing with this self-esteem issues and all of this drama from my past that I, I honestly didn't even realize I was dealing with at that time, uh, it was amazing because I was happy. I, you know, I met Toby and he was making me happy, but I... I became dependent and I don't know if you've ever become dependent on anyone for your happiness or someone to make you feel awesome, someone to make you feel beautiful, someone to make you feel good. But I became dependent on him for that. And it was really tough on our relationship. Um, it becomes tough, you know, when you're, you, you feel ugly or you feel not good enough and you depend on your partner to make it up, uh, make it up to you. Or make it better. So I really had to learn my own beauty and my own value without anybody else. Uh, so before it was, you know, obviously growing up, 
was difficult, but we, we kind of all have these things from our childhood that are affecting us. And you can all relate to not feeling good enough or not feeling like you fit in uh, at some point in your life. But really then having like meeting the person, your soulmate, and you're not you're not ready for them yet. You know, you have to grow with each other. And Toby and I have done that with a lot of our personal development training has been done together. You know, we go to seminars together, we do exercises together and meditation and visualization together. So he really, uh, he really has helped me. But honestly, it was it was my own personal, my own personal journey when I when I was able to see that you know, yeah, I'm beautiful no matter what. Uh, yes, I have value to offer this world no matter who says so or who doesn't. If if I'm acknowledged or not, I believe in this because of me. Uh, and yeah, like I said, it's been a pretty crazy process, you know, being fat, skinny, uh, pregnant twice. <laughs> like honestly, being pregnant for the last two years uh, has been the craziest hormonal body change, uh, life change that I've ever experienced. It's so, it, it, it's been so amazing, but definitely has shown me what my true power is and my true beauty. And, uh, so it's, it's helped with that, that process as well. So yeah, before it was, it, it, I, I just, I just didn't believe myself, you know, I just didn't believe that I, I had, I was beautiful or that I could do it or that I had, I had anything of value to offer. So, uh, it, I can definitely relate to anybody out there who's, who's feeling that way. Thanks for sharing that, Layla. So, you know, when you were going through all these, these, um, these blocks or these self-limiting, limiting beliefs, when was that aha moment when you realized you were beautiful, you know, and you, you were, you did have a, a lot of value to give out to the world. When was that aha moment when you finally found, found that out? Well, it, you know, it, it wasn't when I lost 40 pounds and you'd think the first time, uh, you know, with an outline of a sink, uh, a six pack, that's, that's when I would be my happiest or that's when I would really truly see my beauty or see my, my power is when I was walking that stage in a bikini and, uh, in, in a fitness competition, like the, but it wasn't, it was actually when I gained it all back and an extra 30 pounds on top of that from pregnancy. So it was like one of my lowest moments here. I had been in a, I had been in a weight loss company uh, and pretty much lived off uh, milkshakes. That, that was it. Uh, and, and I lost all this weight and I got really super sexy and skinny and, and fit. And then I gained it all back. So it was like this moment of just looking in the mirror and feeling despair, uh, feeling all of those voices coming back, uh, seeing this giant, huge belly of, you know, stretch marks and flabby arms and, you know, things getting different, your body changing. Uh, and it was just, it was a really low moment. I remember I was in the bed, in the bathroom, looking in the mirror and I started to remember. I started to remember all of the techniques that we teach, the the pattern interrupts, the reframing, the anchoring, the, the visualization. And I'm sitting in the bathroom and I just put my hands on my tummy and I visualize, I started to visualize in my mind, B, my daughter, uh, who would grow up to have this amazing life. And I started to see her amazing, uh, you know, her amazing connections and all of the different things that she would do to affect and impact the world. And that was like this aha moment. I was able to shift my perspective from something really low, really ugly, really negative on myself to feeling this power and starting to recognize and acknowledge that my body was made to do this. My body was made to create this amazing existence for my daughter. And I started to see the extra weight. I started to see the big belly as this vessel of life. And if it hadn't been, the aha moment came because if it hadn't been for these techniques that we teach and really taking them seriously and 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 practicing them daily and developing that skill set, you know, my pregnancy, my delivery, my, my whole experience as a mother would not be the same because I was able to shift in a moment of, in a moment of darkness to see 
you know, to truly identify my power. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was a big aha moment for me. There's been lots along the way, but that one really hit home the importance of what we teach and how important it is for women to understand this and implement it into their life so they don't miss these moments. So they don't fall into old patterns and old habits and they can move forward. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Layla. And, you know, B is such a cutie. I still remember her seeing her. I think it was in Florida the last time I saw her. And, you know, she's just a, a, an amazing baby. I mean, having you as a mother will be, you know, a great experience for her. And I just have one more question. Actually, like, I have a couple more. <laughs> I okay. think I missed the other, one, of the other one. So what's your life like now after that, that aha moment or that self-discovery to to self-confidence? Um, you know, I really, I always use this visualization, but I think it works so well. If you've ever seen the matrix and there's that scene with Neo and the bullets are flying at him uh, and he, he bends backwards in slow motion and he slows down time. That is how I feel in my life now. When there are situations that stress me out or negative people around me or conflict or drama that you know, it just seems to be existing everywhere in everyone's life, uh, or my limiting beliefs start to creep up back on me or any kind of pain, you know, this kind of stuff, it's, it's unavoidable. You're not going to have a perfect life where everything is flowers and daisies and sunshine and butterflies, but you can control how you allow it to make you feel. You can control how how your body moves out of the way of these bullets that are always going to be flying at you. So rather than just reacting how I would in the past, reacting based on you know habits and old negative emotional triggers, uh, now I can decide. I can decide what I want, uh, when I want it, I can decide to be happy regardless of what is around me, regardless of the opinions of others, uh, and follow my my own path that I have decided. And that decision is seriously a superpower. So I kind of feel like a superhero. Uh, <laughs> it's it's pretty awesome. And then and then you go on to inspiring others, and that just takes it to a whole nother level. It just becomes this organism that grows inside of you that just uh, every time you know you you have an impact on someone or you tell your story and someone hears it and they you know they shoot you a Facebook message and they say hey you know I, I listened to your podcast and I, I really I really resonated with that or I saw you on stage and you know I felt like you were speaking my story or you were speaking directly to me every time that happens it it grows inside of me and it, it's become like these crazy ripple effects because the people that I've impacted people that have seen me on stage like you, Sheena, uh, back in Austin and Chicago. I think Chicago was when I had the the uh, the super the su- the Wonder Woman cape on. Um, but yeah, people have seen me and and they become inspired. And then watching their development and their growth, and they go on to share that, and they go on to create those ripples that are impacting other people. Um, it's. It's amazing. It's it, it truly is awesome. And I know that you felt it now because there's people that come up to you at events that are like, thank you. Thank you for telling your story. Thank you for cutting that video. Thank you for that blog post that really spoke to me. Uh, and it it's it's just it, it it's like a, a whole new experience of <laughs> if you've ever you know, been a been struggled with alcoholism or, you know, you've ever done any sort of drugs or any sort of high or anything like that. Nothing compares to when you can truly be high on life. You can live this invigorated life because you know that you're making a difference. And that's why you see so many people that are recovering addicts. They come into uh, this industry and they just blow it up because they're able to they're able to to get that that feeling of life by impacting others. So it's awesome. It's amazing. Thank you so much, Layla. And it's true. You know, it's it's a different feeling when you can actually help someone change their life, or when they come up to you at events, or even just on Facebook, saying because of your story, you know, you've changed my life. And this mm-hmm. is one of the main reasons why I started this podcast is because I want to impact women's lives out there who are struggling, who feel like there's no. There's no light at the uh, there's no t- light at the end of the tunnel or, you know, you, you know, just something for them to have as a, as a support system. So, you know, this is my favorite part of the show. You know, I want what would be, you know, if, if a woman's listening to you right now, what advice would you give to her, you know, regarding her own inner journey to self-confidence? 
advice. Uh, I'm sure you're all wanting like Facebook tips and blogging secrets and, and social media. How did you do it all on social media? Uh, but really, uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to get personal here because it's nothing to do all of my success. Uh, people ask me all the time, you know, how, how did you become successful? What did you do? And they're looking for that Instagram hack or, uh, you know, they're looking for where they can get 20 leads a day, but really it all comes back to this journey, this personal journey of growth. And my advice for you is to really fall in love with the journey and, Invest in yourself, invest in really developing that relationship and that conversation with yourself. Love yourself now. Love yourself because you're listening to this. Love yourself for taking each step forward. Love yourself even when you screw it all up. There is no be all end all to self confidence. There's no, you know, uh, Eiffel Tower, you know, there's, there's no pot of gold at the end. It is constant, constant evolution. And even the most confident and self aware people, they have moments of uncertainty. They have moments of fear and doubt. They just know how to move past it. So, my last piece of advice for you is to get really crystal clear on your purpose. I knew that I was meant to work with mompreneurs and I was meant to help moms around the world spend more time with their kids and raise a new empowered generation. I knew that. And I, it happened at an event, actually, you know, go figure. And a mom that I am inspired by daily, a mom that I love and cherish, uh, Greta Campagnolo, if she's out there listening, shout out to you. She came up to me and she had this big belly. She had a uh, little forest was in her belly at that time. And she grabbed my hands and we were standing in line to go into some VIP party. <laughs> and she grabbed my hands and put them on her belly. And she said, Layla, you have changed my children's lives. And in that moment, I felt this energy, this electric power. I don't know if it was coming from her belly or, you know, it was just us being there and that buzz and that her looking directly in my eyes. Uh, uh, you know, most people go around not looking people in the eyes when they talk to each other. There's a power when you connect with your eye to eye. And we just shared that moment. And from that moment, I knew that being helping mompreneurs was my purpose purpose. Helping, uh, you know, families experience this freedom was my purpose. And, and, you know, it's, it's been, it, it's been an amazing journey since then, but really getting, getting in touch with why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Not just for yourself. Cause yes, we all want to take care of our families and we all want to spend more time with our kids and you deserve that. But look outside of your own life, look outside of your own window and, and ask yourself, what is your purpose on this planet? Really get clear. And uh, we have some awesome, actually, uh, awesome assignments and exercises that can help you do that, uh, that can help you define why you're here. Because most people don't know. They kind of just walk around like, like robots. So yeah, love yourself. Really love on yourself because we are our worst critics. Uh, I know that from past experience. So you're not going to be perfect on this journey. You're going to stumble. Some things are going to be challenging and difficult, but just love yourself along the way and, and fall in love with the process and know why you're here. Know why you exist on this planet and then everything else will start to fall in line based on what your true purpose is. So yeah, that's, that's it, Sheena. I'm... I'm so excited for this to get out there and for people to hear. If they have obviously any other questions, you can always find me on that 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 thing called the internet. Thank you, Layla. You know, you've given so much value. I know whoever's listening to this will have a lot of breakthroughs and a lot of aha moments. And yes, where can they reach you? I mean, do you have a blog or a website that they can reach you at or maybe on Facebook? Yeah, for sure. We have, a, uh, obviously, on Facebook, Toby and Layla Black. Uh, but yeah, you can check us out on our blog, choosafreelife.com. And uh, choose a free life. It, it is a decision that you can make right now. So yeah, check us out on our blog, follow us on Facebook, and uh, plug in with us more. Thank you so much. So um, as, as I said, head over to my website, which is the com, and just search for Layla's name. It's Layla Black. 
and her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about. And we want to thank Layla for sharing her journey with us. And we'll catch you later. Uh, maybe, maybe for a future episode, you could come back. Well, what do you think, Layla? Yeah, we should also bring back my uh, my other half as well. He's always the ladies always like his accent, so he makes for a, a good a good podcast uh, podcast to speaker. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds awesome. Well, thank you again, and uh, like I said, catch you later, and bye for now. Thank you for joining us at the Tout Self Confidence. Head over to the Tout Self Confidence dot com for full recaps of every show our amazing blog articles and resources, and just plain fun. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits, so start today.